So welcome back to another episode of Lead Stronger Longer. This is the podcast that empowers you to purposefully lead your life personally and professionally. And my guest today is the beautiful Sarah Wisniewski. I am so excited to have Sarah here today. I've met her and collaborated with her in the past, and she has some really golden nuggets to share. Of course, that's why I bring these fabulous guests on. So I'd like to give you a little scoop about her so you know why I brought her on. Sarah spent over 20 years in the corporate world. Now she was managing relationships, she was managing projects, and she was managing her family. But in 2018, she decided to take a leap of faith and she decided to create her own business. The reason being is so that she could lead her life with her family and be with her boys while they were growing up during the most important years. And I think that that is huge and especially making those decisions, the most difficult decisions sometimes. So I'm excited to have Sarah here. Welcome, Sarah. So I always like to start with a quote or a mantra. What do you have for us? Okay, so this one has, has been with me for years and years, actually. So it's the famous Henry Ford quote, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Go ahead. You have something yeah, else? Yeah, it's so I, I, I'm not even sure when this first came into my life, but it's one of those where I go back to it and I see something different in it every time. I mean, the, the core message is always the same, but it will hit for me in a different way at a different point in my life. And it very much brings into balance and focus for me, the, the fact that we can do all the things, thinking that we're doing all the things, but actually if we haven't brought the belief system on board and we don't have that alignment with our purpose and fully believing in our goals, coming to fruition and manifesting them it's not going to work anyway you know and this 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 internal language that we're constantly hearing from ourselves that's the same you know whether you think you can whether you say you can or you say you can't it's it's all going to influence whether or not you do and it's one coming back to my children it's one that I will regularly quote at them as well I can't do that I can't do that I can't do that okay well therefore you can't how about you can so I love that you shared that you you actually bring this to your boys and in raising them in this way. And it sounds to me clearly that it's a guiding motto, but I wonder if you can share with us maybe, uh, whether it's personally or professionally, when maybe you've hit up against that. I know it's your motto, but before that, before you had that, were you struggling? And even do you struggle with that now? Oh yeah, all, all day long. I don't, I never want to be that person who paints this picture of, uh, it was just, a, you know, a dream and I floated out of one life into another life and overnight I owned an island and I, there's too much of that sort of curated, uh, uh, well, I don't believe they're all true on social media and um, very much I've had a journey of self-development, self-discovery and getting to depths of understanding myself that I never believed I'd have to do. Like if anyone had told me back in 2018, when I was sat in that boardroom in my, what I believe to my, be my long-term corporate choice, that I was about to take a crossroads and go on the most roller coaster of journeys you've ever been on. I, I wouldn't have believed them. I couldn't have imagined how much I would have had to learn about myself. So whether it's a small daily decision or whether it's a real big one, I think this probably comes in on, on a such a frequent basis on a conscious level or a subconscious. So probably the very big first one was that turning point. It was, I was offered a promotion. I was offered an opportunity to step forwards with the business, but decided not to take it. And that left me with a dilemma of, well, if I'm not moving forward with this business, it probably doesn't leave me a space here. So actually I'm gonna go. But I didn't have that entrepreneurial, a lot of sort of 
like the inner core that a lot of people I connect with say, oh, I always knew I was an entrepreneur. You know, I was selling things to my school friends. That was never me. I was Little Miss Corporate, brought up with um, the, the very much the corporation as part of my family life. That was the route I followed and I loved it. I really did. It suited me. I did very well. I enjoyed it until it started to conflict with the the, the being a mom role. And then I was pulled. I was pulled between wanting to have a career and make a difference and earn. You know, let's be honest, the earnings were good, but also to be a present mom. And when I was offered that crossroads, I knew that it would pull me away from my family even more. So I said, no, I'm out. And at the time, I didn't know I would start my business. It was only really after a conversation with a friend who said, you know, what about coaching? And I said, oh, I don't think I should invest in anything now. I need to decide what I'm going to do with my career. She said, no, not have it, be it. And it really brought everything into focus around what I had already been doing to serve the people that were in my team that I was already coaching. So that piece for me wasn't difficult. I believed, again, I can. I saw that as I can. But there were some other pieces of the jigsaw that I still needed to fill in to really make it work. Oh, wow. So you answered a couple of my questions already, and I'm so excited about this because now I want to unpack this piece. That journey of taking that, be becoming the coach. Now, you specialize. So what led to your specialization once you jumped into the coach, which now it seems like, you know, turn every corner and there's a coach. What led to your specialization to lead in this arena? Um. I'd love to say, again, it was some kind of amazing message that I just went, oh, whoosh, there you go. And it's all, here's all the answers. But it was simply an evolution. It was a realization that I had both a huge amount of transferable skills. I had uh, quali qualifications in HR, in training, in personal development. I knew I could bring all of that. I could bring the softer piece around the team that I was leading. But the piece that I did not know was how to get clients. I was the social media user who kept in touch with school friends, you know, would post big events, would have a nosy around every now and again. But I certainly had no clue whatsoever. I didn't know how to use it to attract people. I didn't know how to, you know, grow a business on social media. I knew all the principles of managing budgets and creating plans and all of that, those pieces of, that I would have done as a department but not, not under my own kind of banner. So being an impatient um, and quite determined personality, I said, right, I need to get somebody to help me. I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to fail. I just need to make this work. So I invested really quickly in someone to help me to understand how I could create a client journey. I now recognize that to be. How do I connect? How do I nurture? How do I then bring those people to serve? And I, I, I had my eyes open. I really did. And the first experience I had, now I can reflect a little bit more with neutrality. I learned how I did not want to do it. And that's me being fair to myself. Like it was not a way that I would want to operate my business from. Um, but it it really opened my eyes. It allowed me to see the methods the processes that were being promoted out there and I knew that I was going to stand for something really different I knew that I was going to stand for honesty for integrity I was going to be the opposite to pain points which I don't think there is necessarily a word but much more collaborative much more supportive and allow people to see the value first and then be ready to work with me so I I learned very quickly that there was a polarization within the industry as a whole that we can do it this way and drag and pull and poke and bully and use psychological games or we can rise above that be true to ourselves be ethical and have a business that still allows you literally to sleep at night knowing that you're shown up to lead generally genuinely from the heart so that's that's what that's the route I went and the more I supported people with their businesses and um, to grow them online, the more I realized that there was a there was a point at which everyone got stuck. They got to the, I understand who I want to serve. I understand how I want to shape an offer. Now I have to go out and tell people about them. And then they would stop because the nervousness would come in. 
So that's where I just gradually over time, just literally honed what I do to say, this is the piece. This is the piece where I see so many amazingly talented individuals, mainly women, and that's purely because that's who I mainly connect with, but who are just, they, they're hiding because they've got all this internal doubt. And again, coming back to the quote, they've some at some point said, I can't, and therefore they're not. So I help them unpack that a little bit with some strategies, but actually it's the, let's do this thing, let's go. And I'll be the cheerleader. That's so beautiful. I love how you create, and I know a little bit more about you. So I want you to share with us, if you don't mind, and bridge with us this advice that you would give for leaders to lead stronger, longer, and stay in alignment with that amazing motto. I mean, that whole thing clearly integrates in everything you are, but then also aligning with that relationship because you mentioned connections. And I, I know you can share with us something valuable around this piece of not only connecting with our own voice and what it is we're here to do, but also connecting with your audience, connecting with those you're here to serve. So can you unpack that a little bit for us? Mm, yeah, of course. And and that, I guess that's that's when I realized that this, the, the, the secret weapon or the piece that a lot of people don't talk about is the relationship. And I grew the success of my corporate career because of a skill set around building relationships, uh, which comes down a lot of a lot of the time to being able to listen. It's being able to listen and lead with empathy. So understanding that not everyone wants to be led in the same way. So you're going to have a variation of personalities. Now, those personalities might be the people that you're leading, consciously leading. It might be that you're attracting an audience of people with different personalities that you know you can serve. So by being able to listen and empathetically step into the place and time where they are right now, so stand next to them as opposed to, come on, just come this way, just come this way and, and pulling them towards you, that I I believe allows you to be in much more alignment with both them and yourself. It's not about being false. It's not about pretending to understand. But if you're listening and you're asking good questions, you can absolutely connect with someone and allow yourself to, to understand them. And then when you can add um, tools and strategies like profiling and being able to you know, really understand someone's preferences around how they want to be communicated with, how they make decisions. There's a whole heap of different models out there that, you know, we, we, we're we able to access really easily. And choosing who and how you connect can be a very conscious decision from both your side, but also for the person that you know you want to connect with and positioning yourself in that as well. And I think that that is what I love about you the most is that this is what leaders need is they need to understand they need to slow down and understand what you just unpacked for us in that it's it's reciprocal because there's there's this momentum that can happen where those with the most marketing dollars get the eyeballs and what i have seen especially for leaders we need to know this we need to step into this place of leading differently leading in this authentic way leading in this listening piece and these are the i guess they're soft skills but they're very important skills that every leader leader needs to have in order for us to evolve in this new world of uh what seems to be a tsunami of the ai generation AI, just like our computers, are tools. Mult, multiple um, times this week, I have heard this extreme fear or need to go into the AI direction. I need to understand it. But in what would you say with regards to this? Because you are focused on really understanding the individual. Not so much, because you did say you also, you know, using those profiling, but it's not AI. It's not going through and using an AI, and that's what also sets you apart. So would you just take a few moments and share with us that gift that you bring to your client experiences? Yeah, and, and I think yeah, we should be debating AI. We should absolutely have that 
on the table next to us. I mean, if you've got any device anywhere near you, you actually do have that on the table literally next to you, don't you? But I mean, in the time that I've been in my business and, and watched the approach to, to marketing evolve, of course, AI has literally appeared in that time. And I will advocate clients using AI. I actually encourage them, even by supporting them with some material, to help them brainstorm, to help them start to generate some ideas and some depth to the ideas that possibly they can't get to on their own. It's not to say that a coach can't, but the, the beauty that another human being will bring is that when we're in a coaching session and I ask you a question and your eyes go one way and you tell me an answer, AI is not gonna know that your eyes went up there, but I know, I felt it, I watched you do it. So when I ask you again, and you go somewhere else and you pull from a different part of your subconscious, then we can dig into it a lot more. So the the AI piece, I think from, from a strategic, you know, from a idea generation, from a brainstorming perspective, it's so powerful, but we're only going to ever allow ourselves to, to access that to a certain level. And I think, you know, that's, that's where we, we need to maintain our, control of the tools it is as you say absolutely a tool um but from a a profiling perspective the tool that i absolutely fell in love with during this year is sacred money archetypes and i i i try to focus people away from the money element because the creator actually says how we do money is how we do all things it influences all our decisions there's not many a decision that we make that isn't led by something connected somewhere along the lines with money but what i really love about that as a tool is that when we understand ourselves and our own preferences we can be just that little bit more compassionate with with, with us and when i found out my um my result i was really cross i was really frustrated i was really no that's not me that how dare it and actually, I was cross because it was so close to the truth and it was it was really accurate. So when I accepted it and embraced it, it allows me to see how I show up in my my business context as well as in my home context. And I can use it, use it as I need to. I can use it as a strength and then I can say, thank you very much. Let's move that to one side and we'll bring in one of the others. So I really encourage my clients to understand themselves and start your business from that place. And coming back to the the uh, kind of where we started, when you lead, you have to understand you first, because if you're leading from an externalizing perspective, people don't really have anything to follow. It's almost like one of those images that separates itself. And then people are just kind of following this slightly shaky and, and those individuals who step outside of themselves won't be as self-assured. They won't be as focused in any sense. And they can often be easily swayed. And I know I've worked for some of them. You know, oh, let's do this idea. No, actually, let's do it. And, and, and then it, it's lead, you know, your, your army of people are then kind of going, are we over here today? Are we over here? Whereas if you lead from that, that place of knowing yourself first, you can be a lot more honest and say, the way you've just communicated that didn't work for me. Can we can we go again? And can we maybe so that you can just be really clear? And this isn't about us saying everyone needs to flex and understand every profiling tool out there. This is just about saying I actually really love detail, so I'm going to need you to provide me with some stuff. Leave it with me. Let me go away, analyze it. Then I'm going to come back. If you bombard me with some headlines and get me to make a decision like this it'll be a no because it just it will it, it won't it won't suit my personality so I think you know we can use this in marketing we can use this in our business growth we can use it in leadership we can use it in our communications every every level all starts with us though and the hence why you know that brings beautifully all the way back to the quote at the beginning doesn't it believe you wow. can so so good absolutely okay as we wrap up do you have a favorite book that you'd recommend I do. And I brought it with me. Look, so I'm a big fan of Jen Sincero. I have read all her books. I've been part of one of her programs as well, and she doesn't do very many of them. So I brought this one because it was kind of it was her original and best. This is my second copy because the first one got so dog eared and scribbled on. Um, it's a, it, it, 
it's one of those books that I will read for almost for pleasure because it's funny, it's very lighthearted, but the messages can cut really, really deeply. And again, it's that you are a badass, whether or not, whether you believe you can or you can't, you know, it's the same, it's all coming back to that. It's within you. Whatever it needs to light that fire in you, find the thing. And what lights your fire today might be different to what lights your fire in six months' time. So we should keep going back to ourselves and allowing that to shift and change as we evolve as, as humans and as leaders. So, so good. Yes, I love that too. Thank you for this. And what would be the best way if someone wanted to reach you, if there's a con uh, contact information, anything like that you'd like to share? Yeah, so um, here on LinkedIn, uh, I'm very active on here. So you can look at my profile. It is very simply my name. Um, I'm on Facebook too. And my website is simplymyname.co.uk um, as well. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you being here. Go have fun with your boys. I know since you're on the other island across the board, you're late at yeah. night. So thank you. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you. And uh, I hope everyone benefits from her nuggets that Sarah just shared. Okay. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you.